Hey guys, we've reached the end of our adventures in proof for AS level maps. So, this is the final concept, and to be honest, I'm gonna be a little bit uh, cocky here and say this is probably the easiest part in this playlist. So, instead of proving a conjecture true, we are instead proving it false by what's called counterexample. So, a conjecture or a mathematical statement can hold true for millions and billions of possible outcomes. It only needs to go wrong once and then the conjecture is false. So this takes me back to my climbing days where when you are uh, climbing around on cliffs and stuff, it can go right a thousand times it only needs to go wrong once and then everything is a complete disaster. So the same is true with conjectures or mathematical statements. So with conjectures, if we can find just one single counterexample that doesn't work, then the whole conjecture is rubbish. So we're going to do this in a single video. I don't think we need to, although if anyone wants any more, of course, let me know down below in the comments. So, we can go through five examples. Let's get cracking. Okay, so the first conjecture. When A, B and C are distinct primes, now distinct primes simply means they are different, then A, B, C is odd. So, this seems pretty plausible. Prime numbers like to be odd, so for example, we could have 3 times 5 times 7. Now 3 times 5 is 15, 15 times 7 is 105. So that works, that's good. Let's pick another 3, let's go uh, 5 times 11 times 7 so 5 times 11 is 55 7 times 55 is 385 huh. so that's all too are we missing anything here? let's think about prime numbers what's the smallest prime number Aha, uh -huh. it's 2. What sort of number is 2? Two? 2 is even. So, for example, we could have 2 times 3 times 5, which is going to give us 30. Now, 30 is an even number. So, we found our single counterexample. Therefore, the conjecture... is false when A, P, or C is equal to 2. So it's almost always true, but in maths we don't really care about almost always. You either are or you're not. This isn't, so the conjecture is a load of rubbish. Okay, example two. For all x, x squared is greater than x. So this sounds like it should be true. Uh, let's just throw in some numbers. So here it's important to realise we are not given a restriction on the type of number x can be. So we're not told it has to be integer. We're not told it has to be positive. It doesn't have to not be zero. It doesn't have to not be negative. So, let's have a little go here then. Let's see what happens when x is 2. Well, if x is 2, we can get 4. So that's 2 squared is greater than 2. That works. What about 
let's try when x is negative then what happens if x is minus 3 well minus 3 squared is 9 which is indeed greater than minus 3 so that's true so it seems to work for positive and negative values what about if x was equal to 0 well 0 squared is 0 which is the same as x so 0 is equal to 0 which doesn't work with our conjecture we need x squared to be greater than 0 if it said greater than or equal to 0 this would be fine but it doesn't it says x squared strictly has to be greater than x which this isn't so again our conjecture is false now there's one other integer value that this falls down for and also another particular type of number can you think what they are let me know down below in the comment section okay so part three we saw this guy in uh, the proof by deduction uh, examples there was a part b to it which said uh, we want to disprove the root x y is less than or equal to x plus y over 2 for integer values of x and y so integer values means positive integers or zero or negative integers so let's see first of all what happens if x and y are positive so it's worth noting here as well it doesn't say um that oh, x and y have to be different they could be the same so i'm going to choose here x equals 2 and y equals 8 purely then because 2 times 8 gives us 16 which is a square number so let's work these in so we get root 16 now on the left and then on the right we get 2 plus 8 which is 10 over 2 so what we've got here then is 4 is less than or equal to 5 now what works 4 is less than 5 so that pops oh, that's fine what about let's try when x and y are both 0 in fact let's just try when x is 0 and y is 1 what are we going to get then then well we're going to get the square root of 0 on the left and then we're going to get 0 plus 1 over 2 so that's going to give us a half now root 0 is just 0 so 0 is absolutely less than or equal to 1 half so that works what about if x and y were negative so let's say x is minus t and y is minus 8 well here then we're going to get the square root of minus 2 times minus 8 which is positive 16 so we got root 16 on the left now on the right we're going to get minus t minus 8 divided by 2 now root 16 is 4 now minus 2 minus 8 is minus 10 so we got minus 10 over 2 which is minus 5 now 4 is greater than minus 5 so this doesn't work our conjecture then is false 
Ciao, sei che... Ok, number four. X squared plus X plus one is prime for integer values of X greater than zero. So here, X is only allowed to be one, uh, two, three, four, five, for example. It's not allowed to be zero. It's not allowed to be negative. So, well, probably the easiest way to do this is start with our smallest possible value of x and see if we run into a problem. So, when x is 1, we get 1 squared plus 1 plus 1, which is equal to uh, 3. That's fine. Next one we can try x equals 2. We get 2 squared plus 2 plus 1. 2 squared is 4 plus 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So that's absolutely fine. Next one we can try is x equals 3. Now we're going to get 3 squared plus 3 plus 1. Uh, 3 squared is 9 plus 3 is 12 plus 1 is 13. That's a prime. We're still fine. Let's try x equals 4. So we get 4 squared plus 4 plus 1. Now 4 squared is 16 plus 4 is 20 plus 1 is 21. Now is 21 prime? No, 21 is 3 times 7. So there's our counterexample. That's not a prime number. So our conjecture again is false. Okay, the last example we then x minus 2 squared is always greater than 0. So, oh, this looks like it should be true. Remember, whatever is going on inside the bracket here is getting squared. So when you square something, you're always going to get a positive outcome. However, there is one example, which is why this is an account example video. There is one example where this falls down. So, if x was equal to 2, then x minus 2 is 2 minus 2, which would be 0. Now, 0 squared is 0. So, there's our counterexample. This is actually what's going on when we complete the square. So in complete square form, you get this bracket part, which is called a perfect square. So we get our x coordinate by setting x equal to the opposite value of the number in the bracket with it. This makes the bracket disappear, which then leaves us with either the minimum or maximum value uh, on the outside or our y coordinate of the turning point bonus information. Okay, so that's our counterexample. Okay guys, that's it for proof then. If anyone wants more examples on any of the types of proof, do let me know. In the next playlist we are looking at uh, algebra. Well, we shouldn't necessarily be learning anything uh, new, but we will be looking at harder examples of things that we have done in the past. So, see you then. Take care, guys.